Hello, welcome to this talk about preparing for the Physics Aptitude Test or PAT. Um, my name is Dr Jenny Barnes, I'm a college tutor and I'm also the manager of the Physics Teaching Laboratories and I'm going to take you through some past PAT questions. There'll be a mixture of some questions from the 2006 and 2007 PAT question paper, so if you want to compare um, or find the original questions, those are the two papers that you need to look in. So the PAT is a mixture of maths and physics. So we'll start with some maths questions. And one of the things that we're trying to check with the PAT is whether or not you can do some of the basics. Um, one of the most basic things that we might want to test either in the PAT or perhaps in an interview is about sketching graphs. Okay, do you have a strategy for sketching graphs? Can you, can you show a, a logical method of how you're gonna sketch some graphs? So here is a question which says, sketch the graphs y equals x squared, y equals x minus two squared, and y equals the sum of those two. And he wants to sketch them all on the same graph. So I'm gonna um, try and sketch these. I'm sketching these with a tablet, so apologies if um, my handwriting isn't the best. Um, so let me just start with pen. Um, okay. okay, so let's just sketch this. So we've got some axes. This one is going to be x, this one up here is going to be y, um, and we've got the graph y equals x squared. So that's just a nice simple graph, that's just a plain parabola. So, so that sort of graph, okay, and we'll label that y equals x squared. So suppose now um, we say that we want to sketch the graph y equals x minus 2 all squared. So if I put little vaguely vertical line there, and um, well, that's the point x equals 2. So x minus 2 all squared is the same graph as x equals 2, but it's shifted along so that it's now reflected uh, about the line x equals 2 rather than line x equals 0. So what I'm going to do is just put a point there, which is going to help me sketch this graph. Okay. So I'm going to go through the origin, go from 0 there, I'm going to go up. So this is y equals x minus 2 all squared. Okay, so it's basically the same graph, but it's shifted across. Now I want to do the uh, the sum, y equals x squared plus x minus 2 squared. And so this point, for instance, where y is equal to 4, one of the graphs is equal to 0. So the other graph will be the value of the resultant. Um, so it must go through our resultant graph y equals x squared plus x minus 2 squared must go through this point here. It must also go through this point, okay, this is also the value y equals 4, and this is at the point x equals 2. And everywhere else, um, our resultant curve must be higher, must be bigger, because if I add this curve to this curve, well it's going to be this curve plus an extra bit, okay. So my resultant curve is basically going to be something which is going to sit above both curves. Okay, so it should go through this point at x equals 2, it should go through the point at x equals um, 0, but everywhere else it should be higher than that. x squared plus x minus 2 all squared. Okay, so that's a sort of um, simple question to test people's curve sketching. How about this one? So this is another sort of um, common question that we often have, which is about finding the areas of shapes. Um, so think about how you might tackle this, okay? You're told that you've got two circles and this triangle here is an equilateral. And the question asks you for the ratio of the areas of the larger circle to the smaller circle, and also the larger shaded region, whoops, to the smaller shaded region. That's the difference. Okay. Now the answer to this, I warn you now, is not just simple numbers. So I've um, redrawn um, the uh, shape here just to make life easier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop um, a perpendicular okay, to the edge of the circle, but also to perpendicular to the um, edge of the triangle. Now this line here um, is just the radius of the smaller circle, which I'll call little r. But if I now draw a line that goes from that to the corner of the triangle, 
this angle here, this is 30 degrees. Okay. Now what I really want is I want to find the length of this line along here that goes from the origin out to this um, corner of the, the equilateral triangle because this is also the radius of the bigger circle. Okay. Um, so what we know is that r over x is going to be sine of the angle that we've got, which is 30 degrees, which hopefully you might remember is equal to a half. And therefore, uh, 2r is equal to x. So that means that the radius of the bigger circle is twice the radius of the smaller circle. So if we want um, the area of large circle, that's going to be pi times 2r a squared, which is 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared. Um, and the area of the small circle is just pi r squared. So um, the ratio of the big circle is 4 pi r squared to the little circle is pi r squared. Okay, so that's just the ratio of 4, or you could say it's 4 to 1. Okay, um, so that was the first part of the question. It said find the ratio of the large circle to the small circle. Um, the second part of the question, remember you wanted to find the ratio of the large shaded area to the small shaded area. So I'm going to need to draw another construction line. So we'll still have this one here, which is R, okay, and we're still going to have this one down here, and we've decided this is now 2R, and the other construction line that I need is one that goes basically all the way, um, is the height of the, the triangle. Now this bit here, we'll call this Y, so this is the length of... Um, half of the side of the equilateral triangle, then what we've got is we've got y squared plus r squared would equal 2r all squared. So y squared equals 3r squared. So y equals root 3r. So that means that the bottom here is root 3r. That's half of this base. Okay. Um, and we also know that this um, length for the, to the top corner, to the middle, is also y, and that's also y. So this means that we can work out the height of our triangle because we know that um, root 3r squared plus h squared must equal 2y squared, which is 4 times uh, y squared, so that's 3r squared, so that's 12r squared. This bit here is 3r squared. So that means that h is equal to, h squared is equal to 9r squared, and therefore h is equal to 3r. Okay? So we now know that the height of the triangle is 3r, and so therefore the area of our triangle is a half times the base which is 2 root 3r, because it's this length plus that length, and we know that this length is root 3r. Um, and then the height is 3r, so this means it's 3 root 3r squared, that's the area of the triangle. Um, now if we look at these, um, this area, the small shaded area, um, so the area of the spotty bit, the small bit, um, this area is the same as on the right hand side and also the same as on the top. Okay, so um, it's equal to a third of the area of the triangle, which is 3 root 3 r squared, minus the area of the circle, which is just pi r squared. Um, if we look at the area of the large shaded region, which I'll like a stripy region. Um, that's also a third um, because this area is the same as the area at the bottom and the area on the left. Um, and if I 
um, take the area of the, the large circle and take away the area of the triangle and then divide it by three, I will end up with the large shaded area. Okay, so that will be four pi r squared minus the area of the triangle, which is three root three r squared. And so the ratio of those two, the thirds will cancel. I want the large area divided by the small one. The r squareds will all cancel. So I'll get four pi minus three root three. And that will be divided by three root three minus pi. Okay, so as I said, the answer is not just nice, simple, straightforward numbers. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And largely we're looking for how do you construct, um, how do you take the, the problem apart? Where do you put your construction lines? That what we're, that's what we're looking for in this one. Okay, um, a last maths question. We want to find the area between a curve, y equals modulus of x to the n, where n is a positive constant, the line defined by y equals minus 2, and the lines defined by modulus of x equals 2. And the reason that we're asking this is because this is going to be a calculus question. To find the area under a curve, that's integration. Okay, So we are looking for an integration um, problem. Would a graph help? Undoubtedly a graph would help. I would always say a graph would help. So let's draw ourselves a graph then. Okay, so if we just put at the top, we've got a y, an x. Um, so you've got y equals modulus of x to the n. So imagine this was x squared. What would the graph look like? If it was x cubed, what would it look like? But then it's the modulus of that, okay? So if it was x squared, you'd expect it to look like that graph we drew before. If it was x cubed, then you might expect this bit to be something and then you'd have a negative on the left hand side. But um, because we put a modulus sign on it, actually, it will be reflective and it will be positive. OK, so as you, as n changes, this graph will change. It will subtly change, but it will always look not far off something which is like an x squared. OK, um, so this is going to be our y equals modulus of x to the n. OK, then. We've got some other lines we need to put in. So we've got the line y equals x, uh, y equals minus 2. So that's a horizontal line here. And then we've got modulus of x equals 2. So that's 2 and minus 2. OK. So um, what we've got is we've got a rectangle here. And the area of that is easy because that's just four times two, that's eight. Um, it's got a height here of two, it's got a width of four, so that's eight square units. And then we've got this bit here, um, the bit under the curve and uh, between the curve and x, uh, the x axis. And that one, we will need to do an integral. So we go from minus two to two of modulus of x to the n dx. But that's a bit of a tricky one, doing a modulus thing. Um, and actually, we can use the symmetry of the problem. And we could say that's the integral between twice the integral between 0 and 2 of x to the n dx. And now I've got rid of that modulus sign. And then that's an easy um, integral to do um, because x to the n goes back to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And that will be between 0 and 2. At x equals 0, this will just be equal to 0. At x equals 2, this would be 2 to the n plus 1. But then I'm multiplying by another 2. So I'll actually end up with 2 to the n plus 2 over n plus 1. Okay. So the total area in this case is going to be 8 plus 2 n plus 2 over n plus 1. Okay. And that's the answer we'd give. Right, so now we move on to some physics questions, because this is a physics test, really. Um, and what we've got is a multiple choice question. Uh, and it says a cube of metal has sides of length x. The electrical resistance between opposite faces of the cube is. OK, so um, we might need to work out an equation and or you might need to remember an equation, but you might be able to work it out from intuition. OK, so. 
Um, as always, I'm going to draw myself a little graph, in this case a little cube. Okay, and it's got sides x, x and x. And if I was to try and find the resistance across two ends, now I remember that resistance goes up if the length goes up. Okay, so um, if your bit of wire gets longer, you've got more atoms that you've got to, your electrons got to struggle past, um, and therefore the resistance goes up. So that means that R in this case is proportional to X, because if we say this is our length, the length is X, okay? But I also remember that the resistance goes down if the area goes up. So if you've got a bigger um, cross section, then it's easier for your electron to find its way through. So that means that R goes as one over X squared. It goes as one over the area, and the area in this case is X squared. And so overall, then R is proportional to X over X squared, which is proportional to one over X. And the thing which would turn this from being a proportional into an equals would be the resistivity. But that's a function of the material itself. That's not a function of X, okay? So R in this case goes as one over X. So that's inversely proportional to X. So that would be C. So I would circle C. Um, this is another multiple choice question, um, and this is a block of niobium, which is a metal with density given by a certain number, has sides of length 3 centimetres, 4 centimetres and 5 centimetres. What is the maximum pressure that can be exerted by this block when it is stood upright on one of its faces? Again, I would go for a diagram. So let's um, draw our little block of niobium. Um, and maybe this is three, and maybe this is four, and this is five. And I remember that pressure is equal to force divided by area. Now, force in this case is going to be the mass of the block times g, so acceleration due to gravity. And because this is inversely proportional to area, then it means that if I want the maximum, remember this is asking me for a maximum pressure, um, I need the smallest area, and the smallest area I could get is if I stood it on the end that was three centimeters by four centimeters. Any of the other combinations will just be a bigger number. So this gives me 12 centimeters squared. This would give me 20. Three times five would give me 15. Okay, so I'm going to have three by four centimeters squared. Now to work out the mass, I haven't been told the mass of the block, but I've been told the density. So um, what I'm going to need is the density times the volume, okay? And that would be three by four by five centimeters. And I'm going to try and make sure that I put everything into meters because I know otherwise I'll just get it wrong. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by G, which I'll call 10. And then I'm going to divide by 0 0.03 and 0 0.04. And by doing this, I can divide some things out and I basically ended up with 8570 times 0 0.5, which is the same as 857 times 5, and that's going to give me a number which is around the 4,000, uh, 4,300 pascals. That's 4.3 kilopascals, so that means that my answer is going to be A. Okay. Right, now this one is a physics question that's about circuits um, and in the question what we've got is we've got um, a circuit which has a bulb and it has um, a single uh, cell in it, a single potential, a single battery and we're going to define that as normal brightness and then what we've got is a set of other um, circuits and we have to say whether they are normal brightness or brighter or dimmer or whether they didn't come on at all. Okay. Now you could say, do I need some equations? Maybe you do. Um, it probably won't get any more complicated than B equals IR. But actually, if you just think about it, that's what we're really trying to test with this is a sort of intuition kind of question. So what I've done is I created um, a little a little table here um, to make it easier. Okay. So um, for circuit A. I've got one cell, 
but I've now got two bulbs. So if I've got two bulbs, I'm now splitting the voltage across each of these bulbs. Um, so actually, I'm going to end up with a dimmer um, bulb than I would have had normally. So this one is dimmer. OK, so bulb in, in for circuit A, um, circuit bulb A is dimmer than it would be in the original um, problem. For B, I've now got two batteries and two bulbs. So actually, really, the amount of voltage being dropped across each of the bulb is the same as it was originally. So B is going to be normal brightness. For the third circuit, C, we've got two um, cells and we've also got two um, bulbs if we're going across um, the outside of this circuit. So actually, this is the same as B. This is just going to be normal brightness. D, however, um, actually what we've got here, these two points have exactly the same potential. And if you have no potential difference across the bulb, then no current will flow. And so for D, the bulb will actually be off. For um, the fourth circuit, we've got one battery and two bulbs for E. So that's the same as for A. OK, so that will be dimmer. Whereas for F, we've got one battery and a one bulb. So that's actually the same. If we go around this top loop, that's the same as we started off with. So it's going to be normal. And then for the final circuit, we've got two uh, cells. And in the outermost circuit, we've only actually got one bulb. So that means that G is going to be brighter because I've now got twice as much um, uh, potential being dropped across G. But for H, I'd be going through two bulbs. And so therefore, um, two batteries, two bulbs, that again is the same as in B. So that would be a normal. OK, so one of them is brighter, one of them is off, a couple of them are dimmer and the rest are normal. This is the last question I'm going to go through. Um, and this is a circuit question with a twist. Um, and it's to do with working out a resistance. So you're probably used to V equals IR and Ohm's law. Um, but what we've got here is we've got a nonlinear resistor, which, op which uses a different, uh, a different law, a different relationship between I and V. V is the potential difference in volts across the resistor. And the resistor is connected in series to a fixed resistor and a constant voltage source of nine volts is connected across the series combination. What value of resistance should the fixed resistor have so that a current of 0.4 amps flows? So what we're trying to do is to work out what value we need for this fixed resistor to get this current um, when we have this other um, resistor in the circuit. So what we definitely need is we need a little circuit diagram. Um, and this is going to have two resistors in it. OK, so what we're, what we're testing here is, you know, we're giving you something in words. Can you construct this circuit? OK. So we told V equals nine volts. Um, this one, which I'll call R1, has the property that I is equal to 0.05 V cubed. And this is the one where we want to find what R is. And the thing with um, a series circuit is that the same current flows through every component. And this is 0.4 amps. OK, so that means that through this nonlinear resistor, the current is 0.4 amps. So 0.4 has to equal 0.05 V cubed, which means um, that we've ended up with um, 40 divided by 5 equals V cubed. So that's equal to 8. So therefore, V is equal to 2 volts. OK, so across R1, V is equal to 2 volts. OK, so that's just using the current that we want to flow, 0.4 amps, um, and this formula to work out what V cubed has to be. OK, so if 2 volts is dropped across R1, then 
then that means that 7 volts must be dropped across R. And then we can use V equals IR. So we know that 7 volts equals 0 0.4 times R, and therefore R is equal to 17.5 ohms. Okay, and that's the value of the resistor we'd have to put here in order to make um, 0 0.4 amps flow through the entire circuit. So thank you for, for sitting through this. I hope that's been helpful to you. Do try out some past paper questions to help prepare for the test. Um, and make sure you watch the other video, which is about the format of the PAT and some suggestions for how to prepare. Um, the top tips from that were to practice with past papers. Um, check the syllabus. That's important to make sure you've covered everything that we might ask. Also use other resources, things like the Isaac Physics website, the British Physics Olympiad, um, some of the other things that we suggest, because you don't just want to use A-level questions in order to prepare, because um, some of these questions are a bit more tricky, a bit um, more problem-solving type questions. Don't expect to get it all right, but do make sure you get to the end. That's one of the most important things. Thank you for listening and good luck.